Hello and welcome to another episode of today's GK. I am Pooja Divedi and in this segment we are going to discuss about objective questions from the current daily news to help you crack problems. So let's begin with the practice question of last segment. Consider the following statements with respect to Brahmaputra river. It originates under the name of Siang or the Hang from the Chamyangdang glacier of the Kailash range near the Mansarovar lake. It enters India west of Sadia town in Assam and Dibang and Lohit are its only two tributaries. So we have to select the statements which is or are incorrect. Brahmaputra river is also known as Yarlung Zangpo and it originates from Tibet. And if we talk about the first statement, it is correct that it originates under the name of Siang or Dihang from the Chimyangdan glacier of Kailash range near the Mansarovar lake. So the first statement is correct. It does enter India from the town, from the west of the town of Sadia, but not in Assam, in Arunachal Pradesh. Okay. So the second statement is incorrect. The third statement is also incorrect because it has more than two tributaries. We will get their names in the explanation. So the second and the third being incorrect, the first being correct, the correct answer to this question is option A, that is one only. India should constantly monitor Chinese actions so as to ensure that they do not pursue any major in interventions on the Brahmaputra that would adversely affect the country's national interest according to the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Water Resources. It originates the Brahmaputra under the name of Siang or the Hang from the Chamyangdang Glacier of the Kailash Range near the Mansarovar Lake and it enters India west of Sadia town in Arunachal Pradesh. Dibang, Lohit, Siang, Buri Dihing, Tista and Dhansari are its tributaries. Moving on, which state government has launched a doorstep healthcare scheme, Makkalai Thedi Maruthuvam? It has been launched by the state of Tamil Nadu. Option D is correct. Recently, the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu launched the Makkalai Thedi Maruthuvam, that means healthcare services at people's doorstep scheme in Krishnagiri, Tamil Nadu. Moving ahead, consider the following statements regarding the United Nations Security Council. United Nations Security Council is the only organ of the UN empowered to make decisions that member states are then obligated to implement under the Charter. Any member of the United Nations can participate at the UNSC discussions. The decision at the UNSC are taken on the basis of majority votes of the members. So we have to select the statements which is or are correct. Okay, the first and the second statements, UNSC. Yes, it is the only organ of the United Nations which is empowered to make decisions that member states are then obligated to implement under the charter. That is why it is so powerful. The second statement which is saying that any member of the United Nations can participate in the UNSC is also correct. And the decisions at the UNSC are taken on the basis of majority votes. No, this is incorrect. The third statement is incorrect. We know why. The first and the second being correct, the third being incorrect. The correct answer is option A1 and 2 only. Let's know about it. While the US has in the past backed India's bid for the permanent seat at the United Nations Security Council, the Biden administration has continued to remain non-committal on the issue. While other organs of the UN make recommendations to member states, only the Security Council has the power to make decisions that member states are then obligated to implement under the Charter. The UNSC is composed of 15 members, 5 permanent and 10 non-permanent and each member of the Security Council has one vote. Decisions of the Security Council on matters that are made by an affirmative vote of nine members, including the conquering votes of permanent members. A no vote from one of the five permanent members blocks the passage of the resolution. And any member of the UN which is not a member of the Security Council may participate without vote. In the decision of any question brought before the Security Council, whenever the latter considers that the interests of that member are specially affected. Moving ahead. Consider the following statements regarding National Programme for Civil Services cap Capacity Building. It is aimed at building a future ready civil service with the right attitude, skills and knowledge aligned to the vision of New India and the programme allows the lateral 
entry mechanism to enhance capacity building. So we have to select the statement which is ORAP, correct? Yes, national program for civil services capacity building. It does talks about more enhanced and refined attitude for a new India. So the first statement is correct. The second is incorrect. The correct answer to this question would be option A1 only. Let's know why. Mission Karm Yogi. This is a national program for civil services capacity building. It is aimed at building a future ready civil service with the right attitude, skills and knowledge aligned to the vision of New India. The lateral entry mechanism is reform to enhance public service delivery which is separate from Mission Karm Yogi. Moving on, consider the following statements. Tribunals were incorporated in the Indian Constitution by 42nd Amendment Act of 1976. Administrative tribunals were set up by an Act of Parliament, Administrative Tribunals Act 1985. We have to select the correct statement. Both these statements are definitely correct. So the correct answer to this question would be option C, both 1 and 2. Recently, the Supreme Court asked the central government point blank to come clean on whether it intends to close tribunals across the country by not filling up vacancies that have been pending for years. Tribunal is a quasi-judicial institution that is set up to deal with problems such as resolving administrative or tax-related disputes. Tribunals were not part of the original constitution. It was incorporated in the Indian Constitution by 42nd Amendment Act 1976. Administrative tribunals were set up by an Act of Parliament, Administrative Tribunals Act 1985. Moving on, consider the following statements regarding constitution amendment bills. A constitution amendment bill can be introduced in either house of the parliament and constitution amendment bills cannot be passed by simple majority. In case of deadlock, there is a provision of joint sittings. So we have to select the statements which is or are correct. Yes, a constitution amendment bill can originate in either house of the parliament. The first statement is correct. And the second statement is incorrect because constitution amendment bills, they can be passed by simple majority also. And the third statement is incorrect because there is no provision to resolve a deadlock through a joint sitting in case of constitution amendment bills as well as money bills. So the first being correct, the second and third being incorrect, the correct answer is option A, that is one only. Recently the constitution scheduled tribes order amendment bill 2021 was introduced in Rajya Sabha by the minister for tribal affairs. A constitution amendment bill under article 368 can be introduced in either house and constitution amendment bills can be passed through a simple majority in each house. There is no provision of joint sittings on a money bill or a constitution amendment bill. Moving on, consider the following statements with respect to monetary policy committee. The committee from comprises of six members, including the chairman, three officials of the RBI and three external members nominated by the government of India, an RBI appointed committee led by the then governor, Raghuram Rajan, in 2014 recommended the establishment of monetary policy committee we have to select the statements which is or are correct so monetary policy committee a committee which formulates the policy to be followed in order to have a check on inflation and of course rbi has come up with the new but stayed constant with the repo and the uh, reverse repo rate so that is why this question has been asked so the first statement is correct that the committee comprises of six members this is correct, three from officials of RBI and three external members nominated by the government of India. So, in, if we talk about the sanctioning or the official approval of the setup of this committee, this was given by the then deputy governor, Urijit Patel. A committee was formed under his chairmanship. The second statement is incorrect. The correct answer to this question would be option A, one only. After a three-day meeting, the Monetary Policy Committee of the Reserve Bank of India on Friday kept the key policy rate, repo rate or the RBI's lending rates to the banks unchanged at 4% for the seventh time in a row and reversed repo rate that is RBI's borrowing rate from the banks at 3.35% rates. Moving on, the Monetary Policy Committee is a statutory and institutionalized framework under the Reserve Bank of India Act 1934 for maintaining price stability while keeping in mind the objective of growth an RBI appointed committee led by the then Deputy Governor Urijit Patel in 2014 recommended the establishment of the Monetary Policy Committee. 
the committee comprises of six members. We have discussed this, so we shall move forward. Specially designated global terrorist list is published by Financial Action Task Force, World Trade Organization, State Department of the United States, Organization of Islamic Cooperation. So, specially designated global terrorist list. It is published by the State Department of the United States. So, the correct answer is option C. The State Department on Friday announced the addition of five alleged Islamist militants to its specially designated global terrorist list, requiring the blocking of any ownership or interest in US properties they hold. Moving on, consider the following statements with respect to Sankalp program. It comes under the aegis of Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. It is assisted by the help of loan from the Asia Development Bank. So we have to select the incorrect statement. Sankal program, yes, it works under the aegis of Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship and is it is assisted with the help of loan from the World Bank and not the ADB. So only the first being correct. Second is incorrect. We have to select the incorrect one. Correct answer is option B2 only. Skills Acquisition and Knowledge Awareness for Livelihood Promotion Scheme is a World Bank Loan Assisted Program. It functions under the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. It has three key result areas, namely institutional strengthening at central, state and district level, quality assurance of skill development programs and inclusion of marginalized population and skill development programs moving on bhanu simha was the pen name of which of the following writers so bhanu simha was the pen name of a writer or a poet or a polymath who wrote a poem at the age of 16 the first ever poem under the pen name bhanu simha he was none other than rabindranath tagore so the correct answer is option b India marks the 80th death anniversary of the great Bengali polymath Rabindranath Tagore on August 7th, a date which is known in West Bengal and Bangladesh as Beshe Shabun, solemnly making the day or marking the day when the poet and playwright passed away. Let's know about him. He was also referred to as Gurudev, Kabi Guru, Bishwa Kabi. Also, he was the first ever non European to win Nobel Prize in the field of literature. Rabindranath Tagore was a Bengali poet, novelist and painter who was highly influential in introducing Indian culture to the West. He was an exceptional literary figure and a renowned polymath who single-handedly reshaped the region's literature and music. He was a good friend of Mahatma Gandhi and is said to have given him the title of Mahatma. His notable works include Geetanjali, Khare Bere, Gora, Manasi, Balaka, Sonar Tori. He published his first poems aged 16 under the pen name Bhanu Simha. Moving on, consider the following statements with respect to Swadeshi movement. The movement has its roots in the anti partition movement, which was started to oppose Lord Curzon's decision of dividing the province of Bengal. The anti partition campaign was launched by extremists to exert pressure on the government to prevent the unjust partition of Bengal from being implemented. We have to select the statement which is or are correct. Yes, Swadeshi movement, it does have roots to the non-partition or anti-partition movement. So the first statement is correct. The second is incorrect because this was this anti-partition campaign was launched by the moderates and not extremists. So the first being correct, the second being incorrect. The correct answer is option A1 only. In 2015, the government of India declared August 7th as National Handloom Day. Today marks the seventh year that the country will celebrate National Handloom Day. Not only does the day celebrate India's rich handloom heritage, but also commemorates a significant historical event, the Swadeshi movement. The movement had its root in the anti-partition movement, which was started to oppose Lord Curzon's decision of dividing the province of Bengal. The anti-partition campaign was launched by moderates to exert pressure on the government to prevent the unjust partition of Bengal from being implemented. Consider the following statements with respect to fast track courts. Fast track special courts are designated courts expected to ensure swift dispensation of justice. Article 247 gives power to parliament to establish certain additional courts for the better administration of laws made by it 
or of any existing laws with respect to a matter enumerated in the union list, we have to select the correct statement. Both the statements are correct. The correct answer to this question would be option C, both 1 and 2. Recently, the union cabinet approved the continuation of the centrally sponsored scheme for fast track special ports till 31st of March 2023. Following this, 1023 fast track special codes including 389 exclusive POXO codes will get an extension. Fast track special codes and dedicated codes expected to ensure swift dispensation of justice. They have a better clearance rate as compared to the regular codes and hold speedy trials. Besides providing quick justice to the hapless victims, it strengthens the deterrence framework for sexual offenders. Central share is to be funded from Nirbhya Fund. The scheme was launched on 2nd October 2019 and Article 247 does give the power to Parliament to establish certain additional codes for the better administration of laws made by it or of any existing laws with respect to matter enumerated in the union list. Let's look at our practice question. Consider the following statements. Rajiv Gandhi Khel Ratna Award has been renamed after hockey wizard Major Dhyan Chand. It is an award for lifetime achievement in sports and games and it is given by the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports. We have to select the correct statement. So, I hope you will be answering it correctly in the comment segment. That's it for today. Soon we will meet with another segment. Until then, stay updated and thank you so much for watching.